Albuquerque police are investigating a body found floating through the arroyos while the city was being hit with heavy rain. Calls came in to 911 about a body being swept down the diversion channel near Carlisle and I-40. Firefighters spotted it, but they couldn't get to it. It's deep, it's fast, and you can't get out. People think, oh, I could beat it. No, you can't. You cannot beat it. Now, the body was swept about eight miles down the north diversion channel through Albuquerque at about six yesterday evening. Crews on an airboat boat spotted the body in the Rio Grande just north of the Alameda Bridge and took it to shore. They say he was a 20 to 30 year old man, but they have not identified him yet. AFD is still trying to figure out how and where he went into the diversion channel. Time is 6.03. New this morning, an APD officer is recovering after a pretty rough foot chase. Police tell us it started after 9 last night when officers noticed a red car driving erratically near Central and 57th. Officers say when they tried stopping the car, the driver took off speeding through residential neighborhoods. When they were able to stop the car, a woman in the back claimed she'd been carjacked and kidnapped. As officers were helping her, the driver allegedly tried to run off through a fence, and that's when the foot chase happened and an officer hurt his leg. He is expected to be okay. Police, though, say the woman took back her kidnapping claims. She's now charged with false reporting. No word on the exact charges for the driver. A wall at an APS elementary school that was covered with offensive graffiti is getting cleaned up. The damage happened at Pajarito Elementary in the South Valley after it was hit by vandals over the weekend. On Monday, when parents were dropping their kids off, they noticed that vandals had spray painted a swastika, a KKK, and male genitalia on a wall that students have to pass in order to get to the playground. They say they complained, but it was still there later that afternoon. It was very upsetting that we came to school and it was still here. I figured it would have been gone. Vandals also tagged the back of the school. APS says they didn't get the request from the school Monday afternoon, so till Monday afternoon, so they sent a crew out first thing on Tuesday morning to help take care of it. A retired police dog that APD said would likely be put to sleep is now getting a second chance at life. The city is now interviewing rescue groups to find a home for that dog. Nine year old Rex has worked for APD since 2013. He was the dog involved in the James Boyd standoff. On Monday, APD said that Rex would be difficult to adopt out because of how he's trained. A lot of New Mexicans felt strongly, though, about letting him live. So now that uh, they no longer fit the profile, they just want to kick him out. It's not right to put it down. The dog was just doing his job. Yesterday, the city announced it's now looking at sending Rex to a rescue organization out of state, possibly either Texas or Montana. Rex would live with the group permanently and would not be up for adoption. 605 new this morning, New York Yankees legend Yogi Berra has died at the age of 90. According to the Yogi Berra Museum and the Yankees, Berra died yesterday at his home from natural causes. The former Major League Baseball player, manager, and coach played in 14 World Series and was named an All-Star 15 times. He holds several World Series records. Berra was known as much for his on-the-field achievements as his humorous quotes included, you probably heard the uh, ain't over till it's over. <laughs> his family released a statement saying, while they mourn the loss, they know that he's at peace. A lot of people are going to miss him. A Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump is ducking questions about the president's birth and religion. In an appearance on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert last night, Trump refused to discuss the latest controversy ignited after he refused to condemn a questioner at an event, an anti-Muslim questioner. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton finally declared on Tuesday that she is against the Keystone XL pipeline. Happening this morning, we're seeing history in the making as Pope Francis is set to canonize a California missionary as a saint. The pontiff will make that declaration during a mass this afternoon in Washington. However, not everybody is supporting the ceremony. KRQE Washington Bureau reporter Mark Meredith is live on Capitol Hill with an in-depth look at the controversy. Good morning, Mark. And Adam, good morning to you. That event's going to be happening around 4 o'clock this afternoon in the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. That's where Pope Francis will be declaring Juniper Serra as a saint. Now, he set up the California missions back in the 1700s, and what's amazing is all of these years later, his name is still controversial, especially where you guys are in New Mexico and across the West. Now, we will see this because of the controversy surrounding what happened to the Native American population back in the 1700s. This event will be at a mass for some 25,000 people that'll be happening this afternoon, as we mentioned at the Basilica. And it will all be said in Spanish because of course, Pope Francis coming from Argentina speaking Spanish. So for the people there at that mass, that'll already be special enough. Now we don't expect for the Pope to get into the controversy itself, 
as to why this would happen, instead highlighting more of Sarah's work. But we did have a chance to speak with one woman, a tribal rights attorney here in Washington, who's upset about this canonization, feeling that it's honoring for somebody who did something wrong to the Native American population. The policies of, you know, soldiers going and physically, you know, apprehending the Native Americans that left, that tried to leave the church, the fact that there was an uprising and they actually burned the missionary, um, that there were, there was basically a sense of slavery. Now, we haven't seen any protests out here so far this morning, and it's not clear how big of any protests will be happening near the Basilica. It's 25,000 people inside, so there's always the possibility of somebody doing something, but right now security still being a top concern. Uh, Adam? And Mark, we know that uh, the Pope is going to meet with the president this morning. I assume that's behind closed doors. Do we have any idea what they're going to be talking about in that meeting? It starts in, what, a little over an hour? Just a little bit an hour. 9.15 is when he's set to arrive at the White House. That's 9.15 a.m. Eastern, 7.15 your time. And while he's there, we were trying to find out whether or not Francis would want to highlight anything specific. The Iran nuclear deal, the Cuban relations that have been reestablished. But so far, the mums the word on exactly what Francis and the Obama administration will be talking about. That event is happening behind closed door. We know that Secretary Kerry will be speaking with uh, Vatican officials as well. So we may learn a little bit more from that front about the issues. Interesting. Well, I know you're staying on top of it. Mark Meredith, our KRQE Washington Bureau reporter, live on Capitol Hill. Thanks, Mark. On to this, a California man has quite the fish tale to tell his friends this morning after he was stalked by a hammerhead shark over the weekend. You can see this in GoPro video. The shark keeps circling 33-year-old Mark McCracken's kayak. He does his best to keep the shark at bay using his paddle to jab at it over and over again, but the shark doesn't budge, following him for about 15 minutes all the way to shore. And when he finally did make it back out to land, he says the shark was still there on the beach swimming back and forth. He thinks the shark probably wanted some of the fish that he had on the boat. That's the theory anyway, and hopefully not him. We'll see you in a bit. Developing now, we're drying out, as Kristen said, a bit after rain, flooding, and hail across the metro. Take a look at this. A sheet of rain fell yesterday near Lobo Village on Cesar Chavez Avenue in Albuquerque. Drivers were a little leery about going into this. Everybody slowed down, backing up traffic, trying to get on the interstate. And downtown, you can see a heavy sheet of hail fell for about 10 minutes last night, making it difficult for anybody who was outside who got caught out in it to see. In other parts of the state, things weren't much better. Tractors were called in to clear debris from the streets in Roswell. Sky News 13 flew over the city, and you can see from the video here that the Hondo River in the middle of the town spilled over into a surrounding park. This video from Jared Tucker in the Plains Valley Online News shows streets totally underwater as cars were trying to make it through. Police say they did stay busy rescuing stranded drivers, as you can imagine. We're going to stay on top of the weather as it does change. To track it, download the KRQE weather app. You can track it right at your fingertips. 633, a man who police say ran into a rushing arroyo to get away from officers is in custody now, undergoing a mental evaluation today. Police say that man was driving a stolen truck. The video shows officers using beanbag rounds and then chasing him down into the rushing water as he tried to run. Neighbors recorded this cell phone video along an arroyo in the heights near Manal and Morris. The truck dangling over the edge of rushing waters with a driver inside. He's saying he's going to kill himself. The man stopped the truck and climbed out, but wouldn't listen to officers saying he had a knife. After minutes talking with police, the suspect tried jumping in the water. Officers pulled him out. APD took the man into custody, but they have not released his name yet. Developing this morning, UNM police are investigating a report of rape at a student apartment complex on campus. UNM police say they received a report Friday night about 1130 of a woman raped at Lobo Village on UNM's south campus. Ne that's next to the pit. It's student housing, but UNM police say not everyone involved in this case is a student. They say they're questioning two men, but no one's been charged. Students say they had no idea. It makes me nervous just because I am young, you know what I mean? I'm a girl. I walk at night by myself to my car. I mean, I don't, there's not many people around, so I mean, it could very easily happen to me or one of my friends. UNM police did not arrest anybody, but they say because they quickly identified the people believed to be involved, students were not in danger. They're not releasing any more details about where at Lobo Village this may have happened or if it was a random attack saying the investigation is ongoing today. We did some checking and an ex high school teacher who pleaded guilty to having sex with one of his students is back in jail this morning. 
Patrick Matthews was a science teacher at Volcano Vista when he was having sex with a 16 year old girl, which is considered rape. In the spring, he pleaded guilty and struck a deal with prosecutors for a 30 year sentence, all of it suspended. He's locked up again after probation officers found porn on a computer in his home. As a sex offender, he's not allowed to have porn. A judge will now decide if he should do time in prison. Let's turn to a live look in Washington, D.C. Right now, President Obama is expected to meet with Pope Francis. That meeting is scheduled to begin in about 40 minutes, just after the top of the hour, just after 9 a.m. their time. It's scheduled to be behind closed doors, a private meeting. Afterward, the pontiff will take part in a papal parade. He'll also celebrate a canonization mass at Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Now, coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to have a special report from CBS This Morning. Live coverage of the Pope's historic visit in the U.S. Multiple day trip here. He's visiting several areas, including D.C., New York, and Philadelphia. And they'll be talking about all that's unfolding in the coming hours today. Now, as you begin your day, Governor Susana Martinez is in Washington, D.C. to help welcome Pope Francis. Martinez was also part of a U.S. delegation that traveled to Rome in 2013 to greet the then new Pope and attend his inauguration. And she's going to be joined by a group of 135 New Mexican Catholics who are also heading to Philadelphia to see the Pope. The group is from St. Teresa Catholic Church on 4th Street near Candelaria. Also today, the president of China is in Seattle on his first official visit in the U.S. During a policy speech last night, he made a pledge to cooperate with the U.S. on issues his country has traditionally taken opposing uh, opposing views on, including cybercrime. He'll be in D.C. tomorrow for a state dinner in honor of his visit. Volkswagen board members are in crisis mode this morning. They're expected to hold an emergency meeting today to discuss the fate of the company's CEO. The world's top selling car maker admits that 11 million of its diesel vehicles have software in them to trick emissions testing. The revelation has already cost the company more than 26 billion in market value. The Justice Department is launching a criminal investigation into the matter. The car maker could face billions of fines here, billions of dollars in fines in the U.S. Time is 637 and happening today, the New Mexico Environmental Department says the EPA is lying to the public about the Gold King mine spill. We would never allow a private entity that we're regulating to do its own investigation of itself and accept those results in order to really build public confidence. The Environment Secretary testified in front of Congress this week along with the president of the Navajo Nation. They say, according to their scientists, the spill that dumped millions of gallons of mine waste into the Animas and San Juan rivers last month is far worse than the EPA claims. Secretary Ryan Flynn says those scientists have analyzed the same data the EPA had come uh, had and came up with a very different result in the process. The graph doesn't have anything about arsenic, which we knew was uh, you know, over 823 times the maximum contaminant limit at the time of the spill. The EPA has not responded to those allegations. A new bill introduced this week would require the federal government to identify the most dangerous abandoned mines in the West and come up with plans to clean them up. The bill also calls for compensation for those affected by the Gold King mine spill and requires the EPA to monitor water quality levels in the Animas and San Juan now and in the future.